Hello, my name is Daryl and welcome to the Sprinter Van Build Series. Chapter 16, we're going to be covering Rickson Enterprises Comfort Hot Diesel Hydronic Furnace Kit. And in this kit, we're going to get into all the details, but it's going to include the um, mine is a 17,000 BTU diesel uh, furnace. I have a heat exchanger for my hot water heater. Uh, the glycol tank, and then a blower motor, uh, very similar to what's in a car uh, with a little mini radiator to put the heat into the van. So let's get going. So one of the challenges that you have when you build a van, as I've said this many, many times, is where the heck do you put all this stuff? Uh, we're trying to compact everything in a very small area space. I had watched a lot of YouTube videos trying to see what people did, and I just decided to do something a little bit different. I don't know if anybody else has done this like this, but this is what I chose to do. But one of the first things you've got to do is sort of dry fit stuff in. So I had put some wood up here, just trying to bolt it in, see how it would all work out. And again, your main components are your heat exchanger, your glycol tank, and your blower motor, and how does that all work together, realizing your hot and cold water are gonna be coming out of this. So you wanna make sure your water supplies are nearby, uh, and you've gotta be able to get this glycol back and forth uh, to, to the furnace, which is underneath the van under the driver's side. How do you go about doing all this stuff? And that's really what we're gonna cover. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna be drilling holes in the van. Uh, so as I always say, anytime you drill a hole in a van, make sure you measure twice, three, four times before you drill your holes um, because you can't fix it once it's done. So when I drill the holes in the van, one of the things that I always put on is this pore 15 rust prohibitive material um, just to present it from rust, especially since this is underneath the van. So as I said, this was the tank. I know it's not level. It's just dry fitted right now where I'm trying to do. You have three ports under the glycol tank and you're going to need two of them. And this plug here, uh, you'll just move it wherever you need it. And I ended up moving it down he uh, here. Um, but you just want to make sure that all this stuff is going to fit. And then not only that, you got to worry about all these indentations in the metal to make sure that your bulkhead fittings that I put in here go through the van and go through them well. So the other thing that we have to make sure is we have to make sure we have enough space between here and here to get this pump in here because the pump is, this is the pump. It's actually pulling the glycol from the boil, from the furnace and it's going directly into the tank and this is all, and that's what this pump is gonna do. So this is where the input of the, um, the material, this is where the material comes in first into the tank. So this is just another close up shot. So this is the bulkhead fitting once I have it done. Uh, and this is my stainless steel screws coming through from the decking above. So with this here, um, you'll see I have two bulkhead fittings. You can't see it there. And this is the water um, overflow line from my water tank that I mentioned. Um, and, and this here, as we mentioned in the plumbing section, this is my cold water for my outside shower. But as you can see here in the tank, what we chose to do is out of this fitting, we have the pump directly going from this bulkhead fitting with a rubber uh, piece coupled through and then connecting right up to the tank itself. And this is where the glycol comes in from the furnace it's heated, this is pressurized tank, and then the glycol is then forced through this hole into the heat exchanger. So that's the first step that we do. So once this is installed and you have it placed to where you want it, then, then, then you start connecting all the fittings. The other thing I did is I chose to use the 8020 profile, and this is a one inch by three inch profile that I was able to redrill the holes that held um, the heat exchanger onto here super, super well. And then here you can see, this is my return line coming back from the, uh, from the circulation side. Okay, so let's go to the next picture here. So again, let's talk about it. So 
glycol comes from the furnace. This pump is pulling it, pushing it into the tank. Tank takes it, brings it into the heat exchanger, heats up the cold water, makes the cold water hot. So that's why I have a blue go into a red. Comes out of the top of heat exchanger, comes around, goes over to my um, blower motor, and there's a radiator in here, comes out of the radiator, then comes back and goes out this fitting here, which is also another bulkhead. So you can see it coming out of the heat exchanger, coming in over to the, um, over to the blower, and then this comes back, goes down, and then exits the van underneath through the piping back to the furnace. So that's really how all this stuff is connected. It's just one circulating loop system. And this is Rickson's information. So if you want to give him a call, customer service is amazing. So now underneath the van, as I mentioned before, so this is my water overflow. So this is where the overflow of my uh, water tank above goes in the event that I, I put too much water in it. Here is where the, the this pipe here, I chose to use uh, the PEX that's rated for hot water baseboard systems. I, I mean, to me, number one, I love the fact that I can just do these crimp on fittings. Um, I have great PEX connectors. And in the event that this thing ever leaks, I just snip it out, put a coupling in and done, I, away I go. And I've never had a problem with the system anyway. And then you can see here, this is the, uh, I, I've insulated this best as I could, uh, realizing this stuff is getting pumped through the furnace so quickly, I'm not losing that much heat. I'm not worried about it. And then from here, I'm running it across the chassis of the body and it's all encapsulated. I've got these stainless steel rubber connectors screwing them into the van and over the, um, and this is my exhaust system, over this, all I did was wrap the foam in aluminum a foil tape and there's no problem with that at all then from here i ran it over and then it goes up and above my gray water tank and this is the way it is so before i put my gray water tank in i put this in and this is where it's going above it um and then i ran it through this plate with this plate here is where is the fill line for the diesel um for the diesel fuel, I ran it underneath there and, and it came out and here it came out. You can see here are my connectors and then I had my adapters. And then from there, I then ran it up to my hydronic system. In my van, I have two hydronic heaters. This is the diesel preheater that came with the van that I never use, uh, but it was always part of it. Um, there was no way that I could have, my, I tried to figure out a way that I could reuse this unit, uh, and I couldn't. So I just ran a second one and this one's secondary. So the good thing about this too, is if I ever wanted to warm up my van ahead of time, there's all these things with my van that, you know, I could set a time and it could turn on at six o'clock in the morning, re preheat my van, uh, and then shut off without ever turning my van on. So this would run on my other battery in the van. So that's another story for another day. But but I have two of these hydronic heaters in my uh, van. But again, here, this is where I bring all my rubber hoses. And then this goes up to the hydronic heater here. How did I mount my hydronic heater? Well, what else? 80-20. So I just took my 80-20 and I, I bolted them right into the frame, the chassis of the truck. And this is the mounting plate and then it goes on there. I don't have my um, air return here. I didn't have it for some reason, but it, that's connected. And then this is the connectors and this is the exhaust. So that's, that's really it. It's pretty simple to hook it up. It's just making sure you know where you're gonna put it. I have to admit, when I first got this kit, I was a little overwhelmed and you'll see why, especially when it comes down to this electric stuff. I never do electric in my own house. I always hire a professional. But when I did my van, I did all of it with the exception of my alternator and then connected my inverter, the rest of it I did. But when I got this kit, like I said, I was a little overwhelmed 
about the amount of wiring. So let me explain what this is, is with the system, when I bought it, it came with three controllers. Uh, this is the original S-Bar uh, controller uh, that really, this just has to be on. You don't use this thermostat at all, but this just has to be on when I connect it. This is the Rickson Enterprises control panel. And this is really the furnace. Um, this is the system power. This is the furnace power. Uh, this is the hot water heater. Um, the power for that, this is, and then this is for the fan if you want to high or low, okay? And then this here is the thermostat, digital thermostat, simple. Once you push this on, it goes up or down and there's your arrow. So, like I said, what made me a little overwhelmed on the system was the amount of wiring, okay? So, they wiring house harnesses they put together are absolutely amazing and everything is labeled and labeled well. The other thing that I put in there was when you get into these systems and you get above a certain elevation, so if you're going to be going out to Colorado or the high mountains, anywhere, uh, you want to make sure you get this option here. And again, this just allows you to do different altitudes and then adjust for altitude with, with the system. But this is the main controller and these are the wires. And then this is the harness. So this thing is they make this up and they simply tell you connect this wire to this wire. And I just got these um, harness clips, right? These electrical clips. And I just put everything together. So this thing was a lot easier than I thought. Like I said, originally it was overwhelming looking at it. But once you get on the phone with them and you talk to them, it's that simple. And then all I did was because, believe it or not, this 8020, this is only one inch thick. Okay. And these are my brackets that hold this side panel on. Um, I'm actually able to put all my wiring behind this little plastic PVC panel, and this goes flush against this, right? So I'm just showing you, this is where everything is hidden behind here, so nothing's gonna be hitting this, and this is how I cover it up to make it look nice and clean. So that's really it on the system. I love the Rickson system, uh, great organization, great support staff. Uh, you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.